that when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So happy to be in the house of God today. Whether you're joining us in person or whether you're joining us from Facebook Live or either our YouTube channel, follow us on either channels that we have. But ask that you get in a place where you can hear from God today, that God can move, that he can speak to you right exactly with what you need is what we're praying for. We come with the expectation that God uses the word to change us, uses the word to speak to our life, uses the word to touch us right where we are. So come with an expectation on our heart as we go in today to let God speak to you, elevate you, bring you to new places and higher heights and deeper depths, things that you need changed in your life. Let the word change you. So be open to hear what God is saying today as we go into his word today. But let's open up with some worship to invite the presence of God in it. Then we'll get right into the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're yours, oh God. So happy that we're yours. Thank you, Jesus. I get captured by your love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. I surrender. My life is not my own. I belong to you I belong to you I belong to you I belong to you Lord come on let's say that I've been captured by your love I can't explain. Now you have me, now you have me, and I'm forever changed. I'm abandoned, I'm abandoned, everything I've ever known. I surrender, I surrender. My life is not my own, cause I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. I belong. It's so good to be captured, God. Yes. I've been captured by your love, by your love I can't explain. Now you have me, now you have me, and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned, I've abandoned everything I've ever known. I surrender, I surrender. My life is not my own, cause I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong. to surrender God my God. 
surrender. It's yours, oh God.
this is how the churches are about to be started as we uh, go further into the book of Acts. And so it started with Saul and his, what we were looking at last week, his Damascus Road experience when the light flashed and he heard the voice of the Lord speaking to him, telling him what he had to do. And then we saw the evidence of a changed life, the way he at once went, at, at once he went and started teaching Jesus is the son of God in the synagogues at once. And then it, it wasn't like he had to take a lot of time to get ready. What happened on Damascus Road got him ready. It made him ready. Amen. And so he was able to at once go and begin to tell that, that the people that Jesus is the son of God, those people, those believers, those of the way, they were right. He is the son of God. I know it for myself. And it, it, we had the wit. We talked about the, the evidence, the witness of it. We talked about uh, Saul witnessing and, and his blindness and all of that. That, that you couldn't even dispute these things. And then the light flashing that those men that were with him saw and the sound. They heard the sound. They couldn't hear the voice and exactly what it was saying. But they did hear the sound. And all of that was a witness to what God has done. And then just the simple fact that Saul was a persecutor of, of the believers. So now why would he be lying and saying that they were right and Jesus is the son? Amen. All and his changed life, all of this was evidence that Jesus had done what he had done concerning Saul. So we went all the way through all of that. We looked at the church beginning to grow and beginning to prosper, uh, be refreshed, and, and the increase in numbers in verse number 31. And so, and being edified, the church was being built up, as the King James used the word, word edified, meaning to build a house. The church was being built up. And now we move into, um, I'm going to kind of go over just a little bit, Aeneas and Dorcas. And uh, so we're going to pick up here on verse 32. As Peter traveled through the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Leda. And the King James Version we saw, we saw last week used the word saints, which were holy and different. And we talked about how Israel was supposed to be a different people for the Lord. They were his chosen people, and they were to be different from all others. But what happened, what we know happened was they began to just blend in with the others, and they allowed their gods. And then next thing you know, they were worshiping their gods, and, and, uh, and they all just they were just doing everything that these people other people around them were doing they just got right in with them and began to do everything else they did worship the lord but they worshiped the lord and all the other gods that they had all together amen they, it, it, it was crazy but they uh, evidently they thought they could do that but the lord let them know you to serve me and me only <clears throat> so as we go on down uh verse 33 said <clears throat> i'm sorry i ain't finished 32 and, and okay, he went to visit the saints at Leda, 33. Then he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Uh, how many of you know that there's no time limit on what God can do? There's no age limit. There's no time limit. We can't box him in like that man says. We can't let the doctor say, well, if he don't do it by, you know, I'm going to give you six weeks. You know, and if it's no better than six weeks, we're going to go ahead and write it, write you all. We're going to, you know, we're going to go ahead and give you up and put you on this and do this. And, you know, we can't let, we can't allow ourselves to be boxed in that way. Amen. Because we serve a God that can do it in the twinkling of an eye if that's what he will to do. Amen. When we trust him and depend on him, then he can do what he want to do. We serve a sovereign God. He does what he wants to do when he gets ready. Amen. So, and we know that we know that and we have to hold on to that when we hear certain things when, when certain things come into our hearing you don't have to accept everything that you hear a amen what you have to do is trust the word the mighty word of God we walk by faith and not by sight it doesn't matter what's said it doesn't matter even what's seen I've seen I've, I've, I've seen people and they've had tumors or different things and they show it to you on the x-ray you saw it but at the same time, you go back and it's not there anymore. That's the God that we serve. Amen. He's able to do that. So it doesn't matter even what they see. It doesn't matter what you've seen. All that matters is what the word of God says it is. And you standing on that word. Amen. 
Amen. We can't waver in our faith. We got to be able to stand. Amen. Aeneas, uh, who was paralyzed 80, Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got, Aeneas got up. All of those who lived in Leda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Notice Peter didn't say, I done healed you. <laughs> he, he didn't say, because I said this, I healed you. He said, the Lord has healed you. It's the Lord that did this. It's, 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 it's imperative that we give God all glory for what he does. We can't try to take his glory. It does not belong to us. He will use you as long as you're able to give him the glory. Amen. The word of God says that people may see our good deeds and praise him. The Father who is in heaven, amen, and worship him, not us. And so we, we want to make sure we stay in that place where we're not the one trying to get the glory, where we're not the one trying to get the praise. Oh, sister so-and-so didn't even say that was a good word. We don't, I don't care if sister so-and-so ever say that that was a good word, amen. When I say what thus said the Lord, then it does not matter to me, minister. He said it was a good word because he gave it to me, amen. Amen, and that's where we have to be. We can't be seeking out his glory in nothing that we do in our service we we can't seek out his glory because it's only him that gives us the the will to do the things that we do anything good in us is of him amen because it's not of us amen so that's the God that we serve so all those who live there saw and turned to the Lord again if I be lifted up then I will draw all men unto me Peter lifted him up and then he drew all these people in Sharon and all these people in Liddy, Lida to him. Amen. It wasn't Peter's doing. It was the Lord's doing. And Peter wanted to make sure that they understood that. 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. Everybody remember the Dorcas. She made the clothes and, and did good things for people. Amen. She shared. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lita was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lita, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. So the disciples sent for Peter. They had heard about the miracles that he had performed, that the Lord had performed through him. They knew about those things. So they sent for him when Lita had, had passed away. Uh, and, and, and he was only about 10 miles from Joppa to Lita. So it says, so they were, they, they were familiar with him and everything, so they, they called for him. So Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other, and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them because that was a custom for all the widows and the mourners to come when someone had passed and just fill the place up mourning. Amen. That was the custom, so they were just doing what they do. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed before Peter said a word to Tabitha before Peter did anything else he got them out of the room and he prayed and that's an ex uh, ought to be an example for us before we do anything else in a, a crisis situation or any other circumstance or situation when we need direction when we don't know what to do which way to turn which job to take which way to go or when we don't know we have a God that will lead us a Holy Spirit that will guide us into where he would have for us to go what is best for us to go because see some of our choices that we face in life are not just a matter of good and bad or right and wrong. Some of them are good and better. <laughs> Some of them are right and then more right or better than that choice. You know what I'm saying? Everything in just black and white, good or bad. And so when you face those things, it's important that we seek the Lord so that he show us which is best, which is better. A amen for us and then what, what what's going to be the long lasting and, 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 and only ways that he can do amen because he is all knowing amen and so because he's all knowing we can trust him to lead us and we can seek him just like Peter did in this, this situation so Peter sent him out the room and he got down on his knees and he prayed turning toward the dead woman he said Tabitha get up 
She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up just, just like that, just like that miracle. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. As you can imagine, this, this news spread very quickly throughout. Look, listen what happened. You know how, like I was talking about last week, how we'll tell people uh, 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 we, we went somewhere and the, the service was good. We went somewhere and the food was good. We went somewhere and they had everything you want, everything you like. You know, the, those, the, the kind of shoes you like, the kind of purses you like. You ought to go over there and see them, and they had them at a good price. You know how we tell people those kind of things and that's how this was when that when when Peter healed uh, Tabitha Dorcas then it was spread that news was spread all over right quickly amen and so Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon now this was important right here now you think this was just a little sentence to end it up and just tell you where Peter stayed but there's significance in this because a tanner was someone that, that had skin. They took the skin of animals and made leather into it. It was a process. It was a, a, a bad smelling process. They always lived outside of the villages, outside of the towns because of the smell and the job that they did. But they, because they handled these animals that, this way, they were seen as unclean unclean people and so for Peter to go and stay at Simon's house was saying something the barriers were beginning to break down the barrier of I can't associate with somebody like you were beginning to break down and that's what was happening right here. Peter, see, Peter already had some things on his mind concerning some other things. You know, it was Peter in Acts chapter 2 who got up and spoke to, to everybody about Jesus being the Lord. Amen. And the Sanhedrin and everybody. Peter would always speak up and say what needed to be said. Amen. I, that's one thing I liked about Peter. Now, I don't like that he denied the Lord, but I do like that he had courage to stand up and speak up when, when he had every, every opportunity that he had he took it amen and so Peter Peter already had some things on his mind about these Jews and these Gentiles and, and here I am and I, I'm gonna stay with this Tanner he has welcomed me into his house I have found a friend in him so wonder why he can't be saved <laughs> like the Jews why can't he have the same salvation the same Lord as I have Peter already thinking these things this is a good man this is a man that lo does love the Lord this is a man that will g give and be a help to the kingdom why can't he be saved like I'm saved Amen. So Peter, Peter had to be thinking these things as he stand at his house. This would have been forbidden for Peter to stay at his house as he was unclean. Amen. So that's what that was letting us know that uh, the, the vision was being prepared. Things were things were happening in the fact that he was staying at the Tanner's home. Because how many of you know there were many homes? And like I said, this 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 wasn't the best place to stay, and it was outside the village. There were many places that Peter probably could have stayed he could have stayed with some of the believers I'm sure but Peter was staying here at this town of Simon's house amen this was the plan of the Lord somebody say trust the plan of the Lord you may find yourself somewhere where you didn't think you'd ever be but just trust the plan of the Lord amen see okay and so let's go to Acts chapter 10 Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. So now here we see another pivotal point in the spreading of the gospel. Stephen, Stephen Stone him. Stephen Stone him started it up. They everybody spread, all the believers spread. They were not afraid where they went. They still talked the word. They still preached the word. They still shared the word. They still shared that Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. And so churches are beginning to uh, be established now. So now we see we finna have some inclusion. We fixing to have the Gentiles be included in the gospel, amen. Included in salvation, included in that, and 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 and. 
Jesus being their Lord, amen, and their king, they finna be, y'all know how we are about inclusion. I can remember Mr. Isaac and I be, somebody be saying they did some or they had some or some and they, I wasn't invited. And I'd be like, why you ain't tell me I would have done so-and-so? I, I could have broke so and Why you ain't tell me I could have broke this, whatever? You know what I'm saying? I could I could have been there. I could have came. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we'll even get offended by it if we tell the truth about it, Mr. Isaac. And so I know how we are sometimes about inclusion. So I can imagine how the Gentiles were not being included. A amen. But now we finna have an all, all exclusive gospel as we gonna see it coming forward. But what I learned in those circumstances, Mr. Isaac, is that what God has for me is for me. And God has all the what's, who's, when's, and how's in his hand. And if I say I trust him, I wasn't supposed to be over there doing whatever you was doing, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm supposed to stay focused on, that's what I keep telling y'all, this is the time to focus, focus, focus. I'm supposed to be focused on what you got me to do, Lord God. That's what I want to be focused on. I can't be focused on what everybody else is doing. That ain't none of my business. I done start telling people don't even tell me that. I don't even want to know. It's none of my business. I just want to be focused on what he want me to do. I can't focus on what they doing over there at Miss Shondell and them house, Rebecca. I ain't got time to do that. I can't focus on y'all. I got to focus on what he doing over there at my house. A amen? And if we all did that, ooh, we, <laughs> we would be a dynamic church. We would be a powerful body of witnesses if we all would just focus on what he gave us to focus on. It's like that example in the word that Minister Isaac taught back, back, a while back. And he had this script up here where the people were answering before the Lord. And, and, and these people that had done all these many things and half of the things that they had done, the Lord had not even called them to do it. But because they lost focus, they was just doing a lot of stuff, and it meant nothing. But here came the woman that was nothing but a good mother raising her children godlike, and that's what she did, and that's what she answered to, and that's all she was supposed to do. She focused on what God gave her to do. It's important right now that we just focus, focus, focus on the Lord and what he has for us and not try to focus on everything and everybody else. And that's going to help somebody. I know it is. I know it has. And I'm thankful. So, with the gospel, with God had the who, when, what's, why's, and, and where. He had all that in his hand with this new establishment of the church. Because who? He used Peter. He used Saul just thus far. He used Philip. Philip was on his way, on the road, on the side of the road when he met the eunuch. And he got right with him and, and shared that word with him as to who the Lord was. Amen. He used those, those he, and Stephen, them, of course, those, and the disciples. So he, he, had the, he had the who's. He had the wins. Like I said, Philip on the road. Peter, when he first spoke in Samaria. <laughs> He's speaking to non-Jews right there in Samaria. Amen. And then on, on down in Joppa and wherever else they went. He had the wins in his hand. Then he had the wise in his hand. And when I say the wise, I'm telling you that God gave you a vision and me a vision of the same thing so that we can come together and be on one accord when we got together. We finna see that. We finna see. We saw it. We saw it in the last chapter with Ananias and, and Peter. We saw that already. And now we finna, I mean, Saul. And now we finna see it again in this chapter right here. He is able to set everything up in order as it's supposed to be if we will stay focused. But when we lose focus, we, we miss this step right here and come all the way over here to this step. And you're not going to get any further till you go back here and pick that one up. That's why we have to stay focused so that we won't miss any of them as we go. But when we don't focus, we can easily miss them. Y'all need to see me when I'm going down the road. 
I, I was driving today, and the lady said, I was taking the lady to the doctor, and she said, ooh, they flying. Somebody just went past us real fast. She said, ooh, they flying. I said, I, I couldn't even say nothing. I said, well, Miss Smith, I can't say too much. <laughs> I said, because if you want in here, I might be flying too. I said, I try to do better when I have passengers. <laughs> I, I try to do good and right when I have passengers in here. But if you weren't in here with me, I might would have been right behind them flying, if not in front of them. I said, so I can't even say that. She just laughed. She said, well, you told the truth. Yes, ma'am, I'm going to tell the truth. I couldn't say much about that. But it's important, though, that we understand that we have to be focused on in on what God has for us to do. Because when we're not focused, we're missing opportunities. We're missing witnessing we, 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 somebody right there was in our path and cause we not focused cause we so caught up in our own whatever we, we so, I, I, like I told y'all the example one time when me and the kids was in Walmart and y'all know how Walmart is everybody know how Walmart is it's just so it, it's, it's, it's Walmart <laughs> and I can't even just put it into words and so so you're in the Walmart, and, and I have two little girls with me, and they begging for everything. They pushing the buggy and hit me all on the back of my foot, and I'm about bleed <laughs> on the back of my foot the way how they, they looking down trying to jump the cracks on the floor, and they ran into me, so I'm a little bit mad. I'm a little bit mad, and I'm aggravated because this the end of the day. Whatever we was doing all day, I'm tired, ready to get y'all home, feed y'all, and put y'all in the bed. That kind of, it was that kind of experience, and then I'm in Walmart, okay, trying to pick up some things for the next day. Well, I turned the corner just how you turned the corner, and that lady said, she looked at me, she said, oh, we need to pray for him. I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, let's do this. <laughs> Because if I'm, if I'm nothing, Mr. Isaac, I'm a prayer boy. I said, yes, ma'am, let's do this. And we got that boy, and we prayed right there. That had to be God set it up. You know what I'm saying? For that lady to look at me, that lady didn't know me from nobody else in the world, and I didn't know her. But I did know if somebody need prayer, that's what I do. So although I had all this going on with these two little girls and everything that was going on, I had to still focus on what God had for me. What if I had said, well, I can't right now because I'm who going to watch these girls and they doing this and they doing that and my foot hurting. What if I had said all of that, my own mess, and not have prayed for that boy that I end up befriending and, and would check on and talk to all the time when I go in there? We have to focus on what God has so that I'm sure now I, it, it, that wasn't nothing to do with me. That was God. And I'm sure there are some opportunities that I have missed because I wasn't focused. But what I'm saying tonight is I have learned that it's important that we focus. And we can't say it enough. We can't say it enough. So the spread of the gospel to the, uh, to the Gentiles is about to tear down some walls, some barriers that's been there a long time. It's like uh, it, it can kind of be compared today. Think about the racial tensions of today. And think about how there are so many things going on to break down those walls of racism. Think about how powerful it is when those walls are broken down and people can cross the, the lines of racism and shake hands and hug and communicate and, and be friends and, and marry and have children and all these things. Walls just broken down. It's a, it's a great thing. And it's the same way here with the gospel and the Gentiles being included in the gospel. Walls and barriers that have been erected between the Jews and the Gentiles a long time are now being broke down. Amen? Let's look. Uh, Cornelius calls for Peter, chapter, uh, verse number 1 right here in 10. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. Listen, listen at his description. He was a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. Let me stop right there for just a second. A centurion was a, a, a military commander over 100 men. And so he had 100 men under him like a battalion. And so, but he was of the Italian regiment, which was probably about 6,000 men in all of that regiment. Now, the Italian regiment, they, they, they uh, were known for their valor. 
their bravery, their their uh they they not being fearful in times of danger. They 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 I, I like to compare them to the Marine Corps. <laughs> if I may. You know they the first in and they the last out. They go and set the way for the Navy and the Army and the rest of them to come behind them. Amen. But they the first ones in and they the last one out. Simplify somebody. And so it, at being a centurion, you like a sergeant major, what we would equivalent to a, a sergeant major. That's what Roy was last in the, in the military. And that's the backbone. He was, they, they are the backbone of the Roman army and pretty much the backbone of the uh, military today. When you get to that sergeant major, he knows some stuff because he's been through some stuff and he's learned a lot of stuff. Amen. Even on the on the uh, uh that's in the enlisted side even on the officer side the captains and stuff they go to the uh, sergeant majors because they know that they've experienced some things see they know it from the book but those sergeant ma majors know a hand on amen and so there's a lot that they can learn from them and they can learn from them amen so they they would get together so this is who Cornelius was he was a man and he he was a man commanding men and he was also a man being commanded by the Lord and we gonna see this amen so here we have Cornelius he a centurion he he and all his family were devout and God fearing that God fearing was a technical term used for those those done Jews had who had attached themselves to the Jewish religion but they weren't truly converts because they hadn't been circumcised amen so Cornelius and his family hadn't been circumcised but they had attached themselves to the Jewish religion they believed in the Lord amen and so him and all his family that's what was so that's what just impressed me so much when you have a man and you can say and all of his family all were committed to the Lord and all were God fearing that shows you a leader not only in his, on his job in the military but also in his home he, that that was good he gave generously and then he a giver he gave generously. He didn't just give. He gave generously to those in need. And then not only that, he was a praying man. <laughs> and he prayed, women, if you want one, this the kind you want right here. <laughs> you want one working hard. <laughs> you see, he that sergeant major. He up there making a few dollars. Amen. And he can take care of you. Then he he he's gonna lead his family in the Lord. Amen. Then he a praying man, and then he a giving man. Cause how many of you know you have to in decrease the increase. You gotta let go of some of what God has blessed you with, so that He can bless you with some more. You gotta be a blessing to somebody else with what you have. A amen. When I had little, I was a blessing to folks. And when I had much, I was a blessing to folks. Just more. <laughs> amen. And when I have, if I have little again, I still know how to share whatever I have. That's how we have to be. We have to be givers. Amen. That's how you stay blessed. Amen. That's how you please the Lord and be a blessing to others. Don't we want to be a blessing to others? Amen. The girl told me that last night. It's a blessing to be a blessing. I said, for sure. That's all I told her back. I texted her back. For sure, honey. I'm glad you know that. Everybody need to know that. So here we have, they were at Caesarea. And now Caesarea was a prominent city. Caesarea was, shoot, it was a, when you think about Birmingham, they, they had a lot of things. They had an amphitheater. They had a race course. They had regular theaters. They had markets. All this was in Caesarea. It was a prominent city. So a lot of people were there. A lot of people were through there. A lot of people lived there. And the largest part of the population were the Gentiles. Amen. And so look at what's, what's happening right here. It's all being, it's all being uh, uh, lined up and orchestrated by the Lord. Amen. It, 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 like I said, God had the wares. Peter, I mean, uh, Philip on the road, Peter there in front of the Sanhedrin, and here at Caesarea with Cornelius, he had the wares. He had the who, the what, the where, the why, and the winds all in his hand. He do it for us, too, if we trust him. Let's go further. Let's go further. He prayed, the Bible said, he prayed to God regularly. Amen. He prayed regularly. Verse number three. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. Now, when you look at that King James Version, it says the ninth hour. 
The ninth hour was three in the afternoon because it was the ninth hour after dawn. Amen. So that's how, because some people might look at that and say, the ninth hour, that was nine o'clock. What's she talking about? Three o'clock. Well, it's, it's the ninth hour after dawn. It was three in the evening, and that was one of the appointed times for prayer. Amen. And so that's, we're we going to see one day at three o'clock in the afternoon, he had a vision. <laughs> Cornelius did. He distinctly, clearly, without a doubt, saw an angel of the Lord who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius was afraid. He stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? But he said, Lord, he said, Lord, capital L. Amen. He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and your gifts to the poor, the, the King James said alms, which is food and money given to the poor, have come to us as a memorial offering before the Lord. What you have done, I'm here to let you know this day that I see. First, he was letting him know, I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see what you're doing. You ain't got to talk about it. You ain't talking about it. You're not advertising it. You're just doing it. you just staying focused, and I see you. That, that's what he was letting him know. Not only did he say it. It, 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 he said it came up as a memorial, as a remembrance, as a reminder to us. And so I am seeing and remembering all that you have done. <laughs> all these good things, all your prayers, I'm hearing you. All the giving that you're doing, this, even the sacrificial giving, because you know sometimes we ought to do some sacrificial giving. See, some, when the... When the Enemies start attacking my finances, then first lady, because she, she counts the money back there, she'll see I done gained more. And she probably wondering, oh, she gained more. <laughs> yeah, because the enemy trying to make me think that is not what God said it is, but I'm going to show him where my trust and dependence is. It's definitely not going to be less. I'm going to show out and do more. That, that's how we have to combat the enemy. That's how we have to show him where our dependence is, where our trust is, and what that he's not greater than he that's in us. Because I trust the Lord. I know you this, this some broke down, and, and this happening, and this is happening in my finances. But I trust the Lord. He has always provided, and he always will provide because that's who he is in my life. He's a provider of more than enough. I say it every day. And that's who he is. And so since I know that's who he is, then the devil can't come at me and try to make me think nothing different. No matter what else happens, I'm still going to do what I'm supposed to do. And then you mess with me too much, I'm going to even do more because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Amen. We have to have that kind of faith when we in those kind of circumstances, when we in crisis situations. We have to have that so be it, that yet, <laughs> that, that, that firm ability to stand we have to be firm in our faith and what we believe, what, we, what has happened before. We have to be strong in what we remember, Miss Shondell. Because if we would just take a minute and remember, we would remember that he did it before. <laughs> and if he did it before, he more than able to do it again. He's not a God that can just do it one time and is one and done. He's not a one and done kind of God. He'll do it over and over and over again. Amen. He's consistent. The word of God says he is our help. He is our provider. He is everything our I am that we need. So Cornelius stand in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel said, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a remembrance to me. Now, because he was a non-Jew, then he wouldn't have been able to present his offering in the Jewish synagogue. So maybe that's how come his was going to the poor. Because if you can't do it one way, you can surely do it another when you're determined and you're focused. You know, some people, because they ain't coming to church, they might still have, I don't know, because people going through different things. But if you, you, you they may have their tithes because they ain't coming to church, then they just whatever, whatever with it. But if you determine and if you focus on what, you, what to do, 
or, or what God leads you to do, oh, you'll, you'll find a way. You'll find a way. We got cash out. We got mail. We got all kind of stuff. You'll, you'll find a way. Now send me into Joppa to bring back a man named Simon. This, this, this in the vision. Send, him, send, send, send for a man named Simon who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner. God, God told him all the who's, what's, and why's. Whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He couldn't call anybody. He couldn't send anybody on this mission right here. Not just anybody. He couldn't just go down there and say, just pick one of them and bring them. He had to send a devout soldier, somebody that knew his heart, agreed with him, that walked like him. He had to get somebody he could trust with this mission right here because this was an important one. So he got a devout soldier, one of his one who attended him regularly. And he told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Because if he had told just anybody, <laughs> now he's not a Jew now. If he had told in just anybody that an angel of the Lord came and he spoke to me, and he told me to send some men down here to a house by the sea and ask for Simon Peter. And it, hello? <laughs> Can you imagine the looks he would have got? <laughs> they been look like, what you say? Who said what? What are you talking about? <laughs> so he had to send the right one on this mission right here. Somebody that he could say this to and they'd be like, yes, sir, I got you. Because I understand you. Because I believe you. Because I'm with you on this. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we call the wrong ones. Mm, okay. Let, let me go further. You, you, we got to call on the, we got to have the right ones. When you're going through things, you got to have the right ones. God will send you to the right somebody that you can talk to, the right somebody that you can confide in, the right somebody that can give you a word of encouragement, the right somebody. Amen. It's not just anybody I'm trying to help somebody. It's not anybody. The Lord will send you to somebody. Amen. Because the last thing you need is to go to anybody and then everybody know your business. That's the last thing you need. About noon the following day, and again, the, the King James said about the sixth hour, the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the roof, what? To pray. <laughs> to pray. Noon was another appointed time for prayer. So Peter went up on the, on, on the, uh, up to pray on the rooftop because houses were small and, and they would be crowded with people. But the rooftops were flat and there was a place you might could go up to to have some quiet, some peace and quiet and some privacy to think and pray. Peter had some things on his mind, and so and, 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 and this was his time of prayer. I can just imagine what Peter was thinking. I'm right here, I'm here at this, this man's house, and, and I don't know what's going on. What is, what's going on, Lord? You know how we had that prayer. Well, Lord, what is really going on? I, this is happening. This is happening. What is going on? I'm sure we have asked the Lord this before. A amen? And I can imagine that Peter was too. But then look at verse number 10. Wow. The word of the Lord says he became hungry. Ooh-wee. Peter, as he went up on the roof and prayed with everything going on in his mind concerning the Gentiles and where he was and what was going on with him. See, a lot of times God has to use people in our certain circ us to be in certain circumstances to understand what his will is. I'm sure we've all been in certain circumstances. Uh, for instance, like... For instance, when Damien started driving a truck, I can't say I always prayed for truck drivers and stuff on the road. But when I was in that circumstance, I learned how to pray. Um, when my children were small, I prayed a one way. But as I had to let them go and give them to the Lord, and I saw some of the decisions and choices that they were making on their own, I had to start praying another way. But until I was in that situation, Mr. Isaac, I didn't understand it. That's why I try to talk to other people <laughs> that hadn't, hadn't been where I've been yet, not because I think I know it all, but because I've been there. <laughs> I might just help you with something. 
That, that's all. All I, If I can help you, I want to help you. You'll be surprised. People can say something to you, and you'll be like, that's all it took. That's all, honey, do that. <laughs> do that and watch what happens. You better learn that reverse psychology. Do that and see what happens. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just as simple as, th as that. There are things that because when you go through some things, you can go back and share with other people. The Word of God tells us that the older women are supposed to help the younger women about. But now we don't hardly want to fool with the younger women. We don't like what they're doing. We don't like how they dress. We don't like they living with somebody. We don't like it. It ain't for us to like. It's for us to be a light before them. It's for us to do what God commanded us to do and teach them. And how many of you know teaching don't go on one time? Whoever was in a classroom and the teacher said something one time and that was it and then she moved on to something else. That's not how it happened. Teaching goes over it and over it and over it, and you might have to say it again, and you might have to say it again, and you might have to say it again. Mine, 30 years old, I'm still saying things again. My stepdaughter, I called her last week, I'm still saying things again. She's 29. <laughs> That's teaching. You have to do it over and over and over. You can't just let it go. We have an obligation, we have a duty. To stick it in there with somebody. I wish somebody would learn, learn some long suffering to be able to stand. Because God gave it. That's the fruit of the spirit. We don't want to talk about that, though, because we don't want to fool with nobody no long time. Somebody fooled with me a long time, Minister Isaac. And I'm thankful. Because I wasn't easy to deal with. <laughs> Amen. I wasn't always holy and, and righteous as I am today. <laughs> I wasn't there. And somebody still dealt with me. They didn't let me go. I'm thankful. He became hungry physically and spiritually. He became hungry. He wasn't hungry. The Bible didn't say he went up on the roof and he was hungry, and so he was waiting on them to fix the noonday meal. It's when he was up there praying, the word of God says he became hungry. <laughs> All of a sudden, it happened, Mel Isaac. Now he's hungry. And wonder why he would be hungry. Let me show you why. But he, so anyway, he wanted something to eat. And while the meal, meal was down there being prepared because it was lunchtime, he fell into a trance. His mind was bewildered. He was displaced in his mind. Amen. Everybody done had, if, if you've had a vision, you know what he, he was going through right here. You, you know what Peter was going through right here. It's like, you there, I'm, I'm here on this roof, but really I'm not here. I'm so focused and tuned in to something else going on right before me. That, that, that's how that vision do you. You don't even, at that moment, you are, even, you are not even aware of these physical surroundings. You just one-on-one -on -one in that vision of what's going on before you. Amen? This is what he saw. So he became hungry. Food was on his mind. <laughs> and then he gets this message from the Lord. Now the vision that he going to get, gonna, it's going to be the answer to what's on his mind. It's going to be the answer to what's in his heart. It's going to be the answer to the need in his stomach, that, that physical food that he's hungry for. But he's also hungry for that. Y'all know that hunger. Don't, don't we know that hunger when the Lord prompts us, the Holy Spirit prompts us to do something and you can't rest until you do it? Oh, I got to call so-and-so. I got to call so-and-so. I got to get that thing right. I got to tell her what the Lord said. You don't give up. You, got, you might have to get on Facebook. I had a friend one time. I ain't know her number. I told my mama, reach out to so-and-so on Facebook. Tell her to call me. <laughs> I, I got to tell her what the Lord said. And you can't rest until you do it. That, that God has given me a word sitting back there while Pastor B up here preaching. And I wrote that word down. I got so excited about that word. There are times while Pastor up here preaching, I had to pull my phone up and look at that scripture. <laughs> I couldn't wait. And then I get home and just go deeper into it. I ain't satisfied. You can't be satisfied until you do it. It's like when you have a craving in the physical in the natural, and you have a craving, oh, I want some ice cream, and you're not satisfied, you'll think about that ice cream day after day after day until you get it. It's like that kind of hunger. It's a, but it's spiritual. 
God will give us a hunger. He'll give us a nudge. The Holy Spirit will nudge us to do something that only we can do. And if you focus, you can't quit until you do it. You, you don't feel right. You restless. You uneasy until you get it done. That, that, that's the kind of hunger Peter was getting right here too. He saw, and here's here the vision, he saw heaven open up and something like a large sheep being let down to the earth by its four corners. Some believe that the four corners represent the four corners of the world, but I, I can't say that that's true. That's just what some believe, amen? But it said it contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. We're going to see the significance to this in a minute. But that word there used for sheet was like a ship sail. A ship sail. We know what a ship sail looked like. Something like that came down from heaven and it had four corners. And in this in the sheet were all these different kind of animals, some clean and some unclean. When I say clean and unclean, and the King Version, the King James Version says, common, shared by many, defiled is what it meant. So because he was saying that we can't, the, the, what he said in the King James is you can't call anything unclean that the Lord has called clean. You, you can't do that. And I can't get into all of it right now. I don't have enough time. But it contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Like I said, clean and unclean. Um, it says, then the voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. As if he was for what, what it was okay for him to kill and eat these animals. Like I said, some of them were considered clean to them and some were considered unclean. Leviticus 11, 1 through 3. In Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, go read that tonight. Those tell you about the clean and unclean. I'm going to read 11, 1 through 3 and I'm going to close up right here and we're going to get back into it next week. I can't hardly wait. I wish I could. Can I have some overtime? <laughs> Pastor said, overtime, I'm going to overtime. I ain't going to take no overtime, but I can't wait to get back into this. Let me read Leviticus 11, 1 and 3. It said, and the Lord spake, spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof, had a part in the foot, and was cloven-footed, and chewed the cud among the beasts, that's so nasty, among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So there were certain things in the Old Testament that they were given that they could eat and certain things that they shouldn't eat. And that's where this was coming from. And we're going to pick up on this next week. I can't hardly wait. We're going to pick up on this next week. Praise God. Amen. He is awesome. Okay, we're going we gonna to go ahead and then and, and close out. Let's see, Sunday, we do have the Identity in Christ uh, small group going Sunday immediately after church. We, we used to be about an hour. And we have an awesome lesson. Do your homework because it's very, very good. And I can't wait expecting that. Amen. It's very, very good being in the image of and likeness of the Lord. So that'll be our identity in Christ small group. Uh, I don't think there's anything else this week. Is there? Okay, that, that'll be it. So uh, we can stand to our feet and be dismissed then. I pray we got something out of the word and I can't wait to get back into the word. Matter of fact, if anybody want to call me and go and get in it, we can go and get in it. Amen. I'm just excited about the word. It's an awesome word uh, and I'm thankful for it. Amen. Let us pray. Most mighty and gracious God, we come thanking you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that in all of our getting, that we have got an understanding of the word, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for breaking the word down on tonight, oh God, that everybody could chew on it on tonight, oh God. Everybody could get their feel on it tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for a word that's not over the heads of the people on tonight, oh God, but right where we can all understand it on tonight, oh God. And we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that it does what it's sets out to do, Lord God. We thank you that it has the power to save on tonight, oh God. It has the power to deliver on tonight, oh God. We thank you for the power of your word on tonight, oh God. We thank you for that name, Jesus, that's above every other name. We thank you for inclusion on tonight, oh God. We thank you for being belonging to you and being a part of your family tonight, oh God. We thank you for being children of the Most High God. And we thank you for being friend on tonight, oh God. 
Truly there's none like you on tonight, oh God. You are gracious, you are kind, you are mighty, and you are great. And we love you in this house tonight, oh God. As we leave this place, oh God, realizing that we never leave your presence, oh God, we ask that you keep us safe, oh God that you encamp your angels of protection all about us as we go on tonight, oh God, and as we finish up this week unto Sunday, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us on tonight, oh God. You lead us by your spirit where you would have us to go, what you would have us to do, and what you would have us to say, Lord God. And we thank you tonight, oh God. We want to be an obedient people on tonight, oh God. We want to be a focused people on tonight, oh God. We want to be a firm foundation people on tonight, oh God. We want to be able to stand, stand for what you want us to stand for tonight, oh God. And we thank you tonight, oh God. We thank you that you are mighty and you are strong. You are our help. Whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, we have a helper tonight. And we thank you, Lord. Truly, there's none like you. We love you in this house. We reverence you. We adore you. You are great. You are magnificent. You are amazing, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. We stand in awe of you. But truly, there's none like you. And we thank you in this house. We invite you to move in this place in our lives and our hearts on our minds tonight, oh God. And fill us until we overflow. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.